Okay, so this is a 9630G, a Viana 9630G, and you'll see it's counting up DHCP right there. I just hit star. Now what's gonna happen is, this will bring the menu, and it's gonna have all these different IP addresses that need to be entered. Um, generally, you will enter these on the phone manually, but there are certain instances where companies prefer to use a DHCP server. And in that case, all of these different settings, these different IP addresses can be um, added to it when it boots up on the network. Um, and that's done using a DHCP server. Now there's different options that are assigned to the different models of Avaya phones. This is in a 9630, but you also have some 4620s and it's done basically the same way, but they're different option numbers. So I'm going to actually show on our server what the different options look like, what the numbers are, and how the syntax has to be. Okay, this is a 4621, and much like the 9630, you can go into a menu. The menu is a little different. This is an older style. For the actual IP addresses, when you go into this menu, it initially starts up right away and everything is pretty much zeroed out. You can see the phone IP address is zeroed out, call server. Now the call server port by default is 1719. But when you receive all of these phones from, from anyone, um, whether it be us or Avaya themselves, um, these are all gonna be zeroed out and set to defaults. And again, it'll be set by the DHCP server with, um, with certain DHCP options. When it comes to DHCP servers, there can be a number of different ways you can set them up. Um, for us, in our environment, we actually have an Avaya G430 that is running a DHCP server internally on it. Um, I also have the ability, this computer that I'm running right now is running Linux, and I also have a DHCP server on it in the background as a backup. If I needed to get that up and running, I could, I could enable that and that could run as well. Um, so you can have a DHCP server on a separate server from your actual voice net network. As long as they're in the same subnet, you can, you can use that DHCP server to direct the phones where they need to go and to give them IPs. Um, so again, this one is on our, our internal server itself. And what I'm gonna show you is where we actually assign the options or, or where the options are. Now, obviously I've already assigned the options um, because we, we process these phones on, on a daily basis. Um, but if I wanted to view them for the Avaya server, I would go to DHCP IP address pools here. And this is my network or my subnet. I would click right here. I would click view subnet. And then this has my actual subnet and the DHCP settings that I've applied to it. Now, I have a couple different, well, several different options in here. As I had said earlier, there is different options for different phones and it's not, it's not like between a 4621 and a 4620, but it's more the actual product line or model lines. So you have option 176 that is used for the 46XX phones, or in other words, 4620s, 4621s, etc. cetera. Um, and the option gets assigned in exactly this syntax. So you have option, option 176, and then you're going to put in quotes, MCIP add equals, and this is going to actually be your call server that you have assigned to your system. Now this can vary depending on network, um, so you need to make sure that you have the, the right IP address. Um, ours in this case is 10.11.32.254, and then the port we use, we use the default one, it's 1719, and you can change that um, there's, there's different ways that you can change that, um, but you have to make sure that in the DHCP server itself, it's assigned to the one that you are using and that you need to use to connect the phone. Um, then you have the TLCS server, which is basically gonna be the same server as your HTTP server and your TFTP server, and that's more or less your file server. Um, again, you're gonna have to have the correct IP address um, and so any files or firmware that you're loading onto the phone or any, um, any configuration files that need to go on each phone, this is what you're going to specify. This is the IP address you're gonna specify for those files where they're stored. Um, and then what happens is when the phone connects, it reaches out to the DHCP server and it says, hey, I need an IP. 
it will assign the IP address given the pool that we've assigned the pool that we've assigned it's going to assign the IP address that it wants to give it and it's also going to pass all of these different credentials to the phone so the phone is going to know what server it's trying to hit it's going to know what TFTP servers or file servers is trying to hit and then the phones automatically know what files it actually needs from that server and it's important to make sure that on your TFTP server you have those files um, labeled appropriately but that that will be for for another time to explain that um, now we also have option 242 now again you have different models of phones um, and for the 9600s or the 96xx phones you're going to need to have 242 assigned and really for the most part you have the same syntax and the same settings assigned to 242 however there is one extra one that you'll need which is the file serve the 9600s ask for that as well um, for some other different files that are included in the firmware that come with the 9600 phones now if you're using SIP there's other options as well that you need to have assigned so there's quite a few different options that are the same these first let's see one two three four four options are the same as the previous ones but then you also have to specify the directory and for the directory it's just going to be assigned to SIP which is the default and the TLS directory which is also SIP and the HTTP directory which is also SIP uh, the reason these are these are just defaulted for us because we don't really use this um, but you can you have do have the ability to change those depending on your configuration um, and then down here and again this is our DHCP configuration file down here you have the actual range that you're using and then you have the default lease time and the max lease time so the default lease time is, is the one that's that's always going to be signed to every phone but if you have a phone that's going to be on the network for an extended period of time and it needs that IP for an extended period of time you can increase this number as well so that in a nutshell is how you assign DHCP options to the 9600s and the Avaya 4620 series phones